All right, everyone, welcome into the NFL Seekers podcast. We're on episode 11. We're going to be doing our first NFL fantasy mock draft. We got a we got a special guest with us today. Three-time first-round exit, Shane Hurtgen, <laughs> is uh, in the chat today. How are we doing, boys? Doing good. So it's great to be here. <laughs> it's that time of the year again where we're going to get into a lot of a lot of mock drafts and um you know I'm excited Dan how are you feeling I'm feeling good man I'm excited to talk some fantasy football it's that time of the year to start getting into some fantasy football podcasts so we figured we'd sprinkle in our friend Shane here to talk some fantasy football and do some mock drafts and yeah it's gonna be a fun off season just doing a lot of fantasy football content and these mock drafts are gonna be a lot of fun together so Yes, sir. We're uh, we're like a week out of the draft and full full force into fantasy. You know, this is going to be a big fantasy uh, podcast. This is one of our favorite things to do. Um, we're going to be on sleeper today. Um, we're gonna and we'll be talking through all the picks. Um, Shane's going to be picking three or actually four. I'm going to be picking eight, and Danny's going to be p- picking twelve. And then we'll talk about all the picks. Um, but without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. I'm excited. Yeah, and before we do draft, let's. I, I did want to discuss the first overall pick. Who would you guys take at one? Would you guys take McCaffrey? Would you go receiver with Jefferson? What, what would you guys do at one? Shane, what would you do? I feel like it's an easy Christian McCaffrey. I mean, yeah. what he did with the Niners is he, he flew there on like a Friday, and then that first he had like one day to prepare, and then he he was there for less than half a season, and he was amazing. So I feel like he's an easy pick. Uh, after he has a full off season of preparation with them, it's an easy pick for me right? for McCaffrey. I won. Yeah. I'm taking McCaffrey every single league I'm in at one. If I have the first overall pick, McCaffrey. Yeah. See, I'm going to, no way. I'm going to steer away from that. Yes. Christian McCaffrey did hit the triple crown in his, uh, in his second game with the 49ers it was absolutely amazing, but consistency 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 is austin eckler that dude's gonna go out there he's gonna play mostly every game christian mccaffrey does have the injury concerns austin eckler goes out there three years in a row and is a I top mean, three running back and then to play devil's advocate i'm not high on taking a receiver ever at number one or in the top five but justin jefferson is he's that dude and so it, it's hard to it's hard to want to steer away from him but my first pick is always going to be Austin Eckler. All right. Yeah, it's a little bold. I feel like you won't see Eckler going one in a lot of leagues. But yeah. I get what you mean. He's been the RB1 so the last few and years. He does, this is a contract year for him, isn't it? So he's going to have to out there and perform as a – isn't he 29 years old? That's pretty old for running backs. Yeah. He is. He's yeah. going into his year 29 season, I or age 29 season, and it should be his contract year. And there, it seems like – you know, they're they're having arguments trying to get traded or trying to demand a trade and stuff. So I don't know. The whole Eckler situation is something I couldn't take over Christian McCaffrey. I'm sorry, but but I get what you mean. Um I and the and the Chargers, to be fair, they didn't they didn't bring in any running backs, which was kind of unexpected, or at least yet they haven't brought in any running backs. They could bring in Zeke or someone, but so like yeah, Eckler's gonna be really good. He he was He's been RB1, and he's shown he can do it. He's going to be I mean, really I'm not gonna, I won't be surprised if he finishes RB1 again. But. Yeah, yeah. If McCaffrey gets hurt, um, yeah. Also, also, Cooper Cup. He's got a he's got a strong argument with how much of a dog he's been. I mean, he goes out there. I mean, I felt like last year everyone kind of slept on him when he was falling to pick four or five, you know, and, I mean, given he did get hurt um, yeah. towards the end of the season. But, I mean, when he was playing, dude – that guy was unfair. I mean, he was 10 plus catches a game and a touchdown a game. I mean, it was just consistent. So I think I think you got a good argument for I'd say Eckler, Jefferson, McCaffrey, and Cup. So those those top four is who I'd feel comfortable with. Yeah, Cup Cup's gonna be a guy that really gets slept on, I feel like, and just kind of forgotten about in the top five picks. I feel like he's gonna kind of fall in a lot of first rounds. So that'll be interesting. I feel like he's gonna be right back where he left off when he's healthy. So but do you guys want to get into the mock then? Yes, sir. Let's start it up. All right. Shane's going to start us off with pick four, but let's see what happens with the first three picks. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do. And um, for all the viewers listening on YouTube and everything, rookies are ranked really weird in sleeper right now. Um, we're doing a way too early fantasy mock draft, so um, we'll we'll be taking rookies not on the consensus rankings of, of sleeper. Yeah. 
Well, okay. So this this is easy for me. I mean, it's Stewart's is number one guy. It's probably my number two running back. If Austin Eckler is there at four for anyone in their draft, I mean, that's the easiest. That's the easiest pick ever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, pretty h- hard to argue with that unless you want a receiver over him. I like that pick. Yeah. And kind of how we thought the board would fall: McCaffrey one, Jefferson two. You can't really. Yeah, argue I wouldn't be either. surprised to see Eckler go anywhere from two to five. All right. Um, Jonathan Taylor, I drafted him last year, kind of the curse of the number one overall pick, whoever, whoever's number one on the consistency ranking always gets hurt or something bad happens to them. They never repeat it. Um, Jonathan Taylor scares me, but I, I do think he'll have a bounce back season. So I do feel whoever takes him at, you know, at number three would be, that'd be an okay pick. Um, yeah, I think Anthony Richardson is going to help Jonathan Taylor a lot. True. And then let's see, Cup, Jamar Chase, and oh, Travis Kelsey went before me. That hurts. That stinks. <laughs> that looks <laughs> so, about right. That looks about right. Yeah, that, that does look about right. right. There's uh there's two players I'm kind of I'm kind of shifting between who I want to take. Um, one guy I'm ultra, ultra, ultra high on for fantasy. Um, I'm definitely gonna take him in the top 10. But there's another guy who's available here. Oh, my gut, my gut tells me I would. You know, I'm going to switch it up. I'm just going to go who my other guy. I'm not going to go with the rookie because I kind of feel like he'll be t- taken. I'm talking about B. John Robinson. I think he'll end up being taken earlier than this um, in most mock drafts. I think you're going to ha- see him in the top five. So I'm going to go with the guy who I think is going to be available, who I feel comfortable taking at number eight, and that is Mr. Tony Pollard. <laughs> Ooh, yep. okay. All right. I know on the, on the rankings he's a little lower, but yeah. I mean, he doesn't even have – He'll move up. up. He'll move up in the rankings. Move up. He's an absolute stud, dude. I'm so excited for him. I mean, to see what he did in a in a crowded backfield with Zeke last year, and I think he was like RB5 in PPR. Oh, he's a stud, man, and I, I'm excited for him. I definitely want him on my fantasy team this year. Sign me up. Give me give me all the Tony Pollard stock you can. I like that. Yeah, I like Pollard. He's a little lower on these rankings, but obviously they're going to be updated, and he's going to be shooting up the rankings. Uh, my first pick, the 12th overall pick in this fantasy draft, I'm going to be taking Stephon Diggs from the Bills. I A little bit of a down season last year, but he was still pretty good. Still like top three receiver, and I, I love Diggs. And what I'm going to do here at pick 13 is I'm going to take Josh Allen, so I'm going to go for the stack. I'm going to take Oh, he's going stack. quarterback early. <laughs> that's, taking taking that's quarterback nice, really nice early. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. stack to have. Of, yeah, it's it's well, risky. I'm crazy. Putting a lot of eggs into that Bills basket for sure. AJ Brown, Saquon, go after me. By the way, this is a obviously twelve man, one quarterback league, full PPR draft. Yeah, full yes. PPR, uh, twelve man, and I took that quarterback pretty much because he wouldn't have been there in the third round because he was going on that turn. So I had to yeah, take that. Him. That's a nice stat. Dang. So Saquon, I think, will honestly be going top like eight too. Um, I think that's a little low for him in this. The rankings are a little whack. Oh yeah, uh, but he was he was picked before me. I'd love to have him. AJ Brown, what a stud last year. Uh, I think he's only going to get better with Jalen Hurts and then Nick Chubb. Obviously, I think in my my humble opinion, not the best fantasy running back, but the best running back in the NFL. Um, but ooh, my uh, my gut always tells me, um, and it's worked the past two years. I am the I am the champion for the past two years in a row. Don't mean to toot my own horn, <laughs> but I've always I've always leaned running back, running back. And so the way I see the board right here, I got Dalvin Cook, who's still available, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, and Brees Hall. Even Joe Mixon, um, Kenneth Walker, DeAndre Swift are all even in contention here. But there's two guys I'm kind of leaning towards, and that's going to be Najee and Josh Jacobs. Najee just got a totally revamped offensive line um, with Broderick Jones. And then even on the right side, they're going to have Darnell Washington over there, who's going to be an absolute stud blocker. Um, so I really like him. But Josh Jacobs coming off that fantastic season, I mean, he should probably be a little higher. I'm going to go with my gut and go Josh Jacobs. I mean, he's he's on a franchise tag. He has to perform again. I think he's going to be ultra productive, and I love that pick. Yeah, that was the pick right there. Good pick. I like that. And yeah, I mean, considering his production last year, I mean, what a steal that is in the second round getting Josh Jacobs. If he does go in the second round and drafts this year, it's just an absolute steal and ridiculous that he's there. Um, so I'm back up. I, you know, there was a running back coming into this draft before the NFL draft that I, 
I loved. And I was like, I'm going to have this guy. And then after the draft was over, I want nothing to do with him. So that, that was Kenneth Walker. I was loving him. And now with, is it Charbonnet that's there? Yeah, that, I hate that. that. I hate that so much, for, especially in dynasty. Like they're yeah. both such, they could both be bell cow running backs, which they could both be hurts. yeah, amazing dynasty running backs in there. And they're just going to be split. And so that that's unfortunate. Um, so I think here it's, it's a little bit scary. He's coming off a pretty serious injury, but Brees Hall, I mean, that, that as a, his rookie year was looking so good. And with Aaron Rodgers now, that is, that's going to be, I think he's going to have a solid year. Um, typically running backs have a better second year after an ACL injury. So this year is definitely a little bit scary, but I think Brees Hall is going to be solid. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Brees Hall. You watched his production last year. I mean, he carried that offense. Um, oh, Danny just <laughs> put Bijan. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting Bijan uh, just so gone. he goes off, so it's realistic. Yeah, yeah. he'd be gone. He'd be gone. Yeah, yeah. Brees Hall. Brees Hall. I mean, absolute stud. He was carrying that Jets offense through the first seven weeks um, until he got hurt. And I mean, he was he was the number one uh, rookie running back coming out last year. Absolute stud. I mean, I think he's going to be even better with Aaron Rodgers this year. And he's truly their only um. I mean, he's their, he's their running back one. I mean, he's going to be their bell cow. He's going to get all the touches. And that's a great spot. I mean, to get Austin Eckler and Brees Hall, that's that's a hell of a draft already for you, Shane. That, that is. <laughs> having those running backs, if I were to have those in real life, that would be insane. And there's still so many really good running backs on the board. I mean, Travis Etienne, Aaron Jones, Rondre Stevens. I mean, there's still so many good running backs. But I – it's hard. It's a tough situation. Do I want to get my first wide receiver or do I want to have a flex and have, a, I don't know. It's tough or tight end or tight end. Tight ends go early. You know? No, I wouldn't do a tight end here. You are in a good a, spot though. With those two running backs to start off your draft, everything else is just house money. I, it would be an easy pick right here for Garrett Wilson, but one, I don't think he'd be here in real life. And two, Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson having two, I mean, I guess with Aaron Rodgers, that would be nice, but I don't think he'd be here in real life. Man, this is tough. He could be. I think it's somewhat real. Yeah, I, I would say third round is where I, I picture Garrett Wilson for sure. Yeah, I think it's really. I, I would love if, if Garrett Wilson falls to me. I mean, hell yeah, that'd man. be fun too you with Brees what? Hall adding him. I made my mind up. The wide receivers, there's a lot of solid ones, but none are like with Debo. Debo could have a better year this year, sure. But I just think Travis Etienne in the third round with the third year Trevor Lawrence. That was your flex. I Stacking like it. Those running backs. Up. Those three running backs are crazy to have on a team. That's yeah, so right here, I mean, I, I, I always like to, in my in my opinion, I always go two running backs, and I, I'll go anywhere from here. Yeah. It could be tight end. It could be quarterback. It could be wide receiver. Um, but with the, with the way the board has fallen, I mean, I got George Kittle right here, which I really like, and then and the drop-off is substantial after him. But Shane said his name, Garrett Wilson. I think he could, I think he could be here in the third round. I'd feel comfortable with him. Yeah. In the third round. It's realistic at this point of the off season. It's really it's fine. It's fine. I mean, he might shoot up draft boards, come here soon, and be a second round pick. Yeah. Um, but I mean, but with how many receivers they have in that offense too, like with how many mouths they have to feed, I think it's fine and realistic. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Then there's Keenan Allen too. That is my dude. Ultra productive as long as he stays healthy. Which I'm not touching Keenan. You know, never again. He's the big <laughs> if. He never he's never healthy for a full season. No. So, you know, I like the youngness. I like the upside of Garrett Wilson. He's got Aaron Rodgers thrown to him now. So his quarterback situation's good. And, you know, he reminds me a lot of Devontae Adams. And I think Aaron Rodgers likes to kind of kind of tune in on one guy. So give me give me Garrett Wilson. I love all the upside right there. I love I love my draft so far. Garrett Wilson's gonna Wilson. be so crazy this year with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he's going to be a monster. Adding him in with those two running backs is great. Um, I have a different approach than you guys. I've got a receiver and a quarterback, but I am looking at the running backs here. I'm staring down. I got Debo on the board. I got Aaron Jones, my boy Javante. A little early for him with the injury. A little early, sadly. Kenneth Walker coming off injury and with Charbonnet. I'm a little turned off here. I think James nope. Conner. I feel like James Conner off, like, off season is always – ranked so low but when he got healthy last year he was so productive yeah james james connor's always just slept on he always kind of falls through slips through the cracks and he's always reliable so definitely a good option i'm actually i think i'm gonna go ramondre stevenson though with my 
yeah third round pick and um get a running back in there i had him last year in our league and he was super good and productive for me and really fun player i'm excited for him this year they haven't really brought anyone in other than who was it damian harris or uh, not damian harris Devin right. Singletary. no who do they bring in who do they get? Oh, I- james robinson James Rodgers. Oh, okay, James. so yeah, no one really. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that pick of Ramondre Stevenson. Um, who would have known? Who would have known that a that a Patriots running back could be so productive? And he he proved us all wrong last year. And yeah, you did get him, and it it was it was fantastic. You ended up trading for him actually, like week three, and it was one of the better trades of the year. Yeah, and then with my next pick, I am gonna go with Kenneth Walker. Still, it's scary with Kenneth with Charbonnet coming in and. The, Fourth round, though, I think it's fine to take Kenneth Walker. Like I said, it's scary, but he was so good last year. Yeah, I think that's good value for him. I mean, there's going to be a point where he might fall too much, and then it's just going to be a steal to get him. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this is probably, like, the range, like, where you feel comfortable taking him. I wouldn't be able to get him in the fifth round, I don't think. So, yeah, that's the turn where you feel comfortable taking him if you have the 12th pick. But, yeah, Kenneth Walker, he's going to be good still with Charbonnet coming in. He's still a rookie, so Charbonnet is not going to get all the – snaps or anything uh coming off injury is another thing that hurts walker but he was so good last year and so productive he was a league winner for some teams so i like getting that running back room i'm sad both of my uh two picks are, are both gone justin herbert that would fall <laughs> he's gone george kittle picked one pick before me and then keenan Oof. allen too <laughs> dang it <laughs> um but i'm kind of um kind of between a couple players here um feel comfortable in a, a couple different ways. I'm kind of looking quarterback. I think I'm going to go quarterback here. I'm ah, looking at Lamar Jackson, Justin back. Fields, but give me that Justin Fields stock, man. He came in last year. Dude was an absolute menace. I mean, he was he ran for over a 1,000 yards. He runs touchdowns. They've improved that offense. They got DJ Moore. I mean, they they, they improved the line. They got Darnell Wright. I mean, they invested in, in – Justin Fields and made that team better so he was so productive I mean, he was a fantasy league winner in a lot of leagues um who people that picked him off the waiver wire I mean he was like fantasy quarterback number three or one um like the last eight weeks so I'm going to go upside on Justin Fields and you know the running the running is there he ran for over a thousand yards last year the running touchdowns are there he's the focal point of that offense so give me all the Justin Fields stock you can I, I like Justin Fields. I thought for sure you own Lamar Jackson because I was going to go quarterback here. Um, but so obviously I'm going Lamar Jackson. I feel like Lamar Jackson as a sixth quarterback off the board is pretty solid. His new, obviously his new massive contract. He's got new solid weapons and obviously still Mark Andrews. I think Lamar Jackson's in for a good bounce back year. Oh, for sure. For sure. Lamar Jackson, such a stud. I mean, he's the Justin Fields before Justin Fields, you know, the best running running quarterback. It's those two, 1A and 1B, however you want to put them, but they're both studs. And you want, you know, a quarterback that can run and get you, you know, both these quarterbacks seem to break out like 50-yard runs. And in fantasy, that's fantastic. That's just points, points, points. And they'll take a lot of running touchdowns away. So that's a great pick, Shana. I like, I like the way your team's looking. Yeah, Lamar Jackson was rough last year, but I mean, I think he's going to bounce back. I think he could be, be electric this year and be an MVP candidate and be really productive in fantasy. I'm excited. I'm going to draft him in leagues if I don't get Josh Allen or Mahomes early. Um, and then what after, happened to, oh. what happened to you drafting Lamar Jackson last year? Uh, this kid named <laughs> stole the pick before me and screwed my whole draft plan, and my whole draft, and my whole season. Thank you. We gotta we gotta live stream our our draft for the podcast for okay. for the viewers so so they know how serious we take this. <laughs> yeah. um, Fantasy league's a fun one, but uh, I I did want to talk about the next pick after your pick. We've been bad about talking about the auto picks, but oh yeah, TJ Hawkinson, really good tight end last year. Was he the tight end one last year? No, or, he was other than Kelsey, tight end three. He was tight end, tight end three. three. Okay, so tight end two technically because Kelsey doesn't count. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love. Him going in the fourth round, that's a steal. Um, I'm I'm targeting Hawkinson in a lot of leagues this year, so I wanted to talk about him. And I also wanted to talk about Devontae Smith. Absolute monster. That Eagles offense is going to be a fun one. Targeted in fantasy, and Devontae Smith is electric. Does um, Jordan Addison not change your mindset on TJ Hawkinson at all? Does it scare, does it scare you away from him at all? I don't think so because they lost Thielen. So it's kind of just like, you know, He's replacing like- Thielen. Thielen's a good player. He he got Thielen got a lot of red zone looks still. So 
I wouldn't think so. I, I would actually like it more because I feel like Addison may get less red zone looks than Thielen did. So I don't I don't mind it too much. Yeah, good point. Um, okay, so my team, I don't have a wide receiver, but still, <laughs> I mean, there's an easy the person for me, there's an easy wide receiver I'm gonna pick right here. He um he had some injuries last year, but when he was healthy and even though he was a rookie, he was and with terrible quarterback play. He was still so solid this year with a better quarterback. You always talk, hear people talk about the second year breakout. I think Chris Olave is in for a big second year. Hundred percent, and he's got a new quarterback. Yeah, like you said, Derek Carr is there. Um, you know, I think I think he could absolutely thrive in that Saints offense. And I, you know, out of all the receivers who are there, I, I like him the most um, with upside and everything. You know, he's a deep threat. He's an intermediate guy, um, and he was a stud last year. You know, and he's only he's only going to improve this year so i absolutely love that pick and i think Javante with, williams with no just went in. we'll quick real fast on olave i think with no camara i'm sure camara's gonna get suspended i think yeah no oh, camara yeah, taking um taking targets that's just more for olave so that's one i wanted to add that in there real quick yeah and i wanted to say with you not taking receiver till what was it round five i like i like you taking the shot on olave because he has wide receiver one upside for sure some of the better wide receiver one upside for sure with Derek Carr coming in. I like that connection. And yeah, Josh, like you said, Javante Williams getting stolen right before me here in the fifth round. It's it's hard really because you don't know how long he's going to miss still. We still don't know how long he's going to be out. Um, P. Ryan's a good running back. So still a little scared about Javante. I don't know where I'm going to take him in fantasy, but he's around scary. here he's not bad. He's scary this year. Yeah. All right. So I got a, I got a question here. Um, do we think this is a uh, is this too late on Jameer Gibbs? Would he have gone already? No, I think I think this is his spot. Okay. I mean, you never know. Our league is. I mean, if we're talking personally, yeah. our league's pretty random, right? But it could be. It could go either way. Yeah. Right I mean, now, though, it's not bad. Like James Conner, Javante just went. I think it's a fine spot right now. If you wanted to. Okay. I mean, I really there's two guys I want to take. You know. I want to do a little different. I really want Jameer Gibbs. I'd probably take him here, but I want to do something funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Miles Sanders. I like him. <laughs> well, I, I, I like, like him this year. Dan, you kind of turned me on to this one a couple a couple of weeks ago, um, and I thought more about it. I mean, he's going to walk into this uh, to this Panthers offense with a rookie quarterback that's going to rely a lot a lot on his um, running back and a lot of checkdowns. And those then the Panthers love, you know, that's just been their bread and butter, even with Chris McCaffrey. Um, even when he left, they were their their running backs are a focal point of that offense. Um, so Miles Sanders, absolute stud here. You know, this is he's gonna be in my flex position. I absolutely love that. Having three running backs that I can flex in and out, especially on bye weeks, is so important for me in fantasy. Because running back is really truly the most valuable position, and you need them. And you need a lot of them, and you never know who's going to get hurt and bye weeks and everything. And these guys are your league winners. So I love the upside of Miles Sanders. I love him. I love him in that offense with uh, Shane Steichen. I'm sorry, not Shane Steichen. Um, Frank Wright. Sorry, got the Colts confused. But Frank Wright, um, who's had who's featured Jonathan Taylor in multiple fantasy, you know, top seasons. So give me give me Miles Sanders there. No, yeah, I love it. And they didn't bring any running backs in for the draft, so I I, I love. Miles Sanders, he's going to be slept on, and around here is a perfect spot to take him. Um, I think Miles Sanders is going to be really productive and scoring a lot of touchdowns for Frank Reich's offense. 100%. All right, Dan, you are on the clock. I am picking. I am i don't know if he's – I'm pretty positive he's not going to be here, but I'm taking him since he's here. I'm taking Jerry Judy, my, my guy. I think he's going to have a great season as the Broncos wide receiver one in his first year in the Sean Payton offense. I think – Jerry Judy could break out. I think Russ could improve this year. And they 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 showed to have a really good connection together last at the end of last year. Judy really bursted onto the scene and started to break out and show his potential. So uh, or reach his potential potential. So I really like Judy this year. I'm gonna target him around this spot in all these in all my leagues. And yeah, I'm excited about Judy. Yeah, that's uh that's a fair value spot for him, you know. I wouldn't expect him to go super high. Um obviously you're a Broncos fan. Um, so I, I get that you take the upside. I'm a little scared of Russell Wilson still. I just I don't know. He scares I'm me. I'm not what scares me is all the wide receivers they have in that wide receiver room. Granted, I think Jared Judy, if he stays healthy, he's the 
clear number one, even above Cortland Sutton. But still, there's Marvin so Mims, many, man, don't sleep on so him. many mouths to feed. Guy. There's so many mouths to feed for Russ Wilson. I don't know. It's it could be a little bit scary. Yeah, that 100%. is definitely why he falls here to this range yeah. is because with all those other receivers with Sutton, um, they brought in Callaway, Hamler's coming back from injury, Judy. I mean, Mims, Patrick's coming back yeah. from injury, and Mims coming back. Well. And don't forget about Greg Dulcich. And they didn't they draft a tight end or Dulcich, oh no, they, traded they, traded, they traded a pick for Adam Troutman. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So there's a lot of targets to be spread around in that offense. Yeah, definitely. And we're in the backfield as well. But and I get it, but I think just Sean Payton's gonna have a, a nice, you know, a pretty good breakout season for that Broncos offense. And I think Judy's gonna be their like main focal point receiver this year. Yeah, he'll be their guy. Yeah. Sean Payton in the offense is always usually just focus on one receiver. So it will be interesting to see how the Broncos work with all those receivers. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Judy. I think he's going to be productive for fantasy, especially as a flex. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Question for you guys. How do you feel about Kyle Pitts this year? I want absolutely nothing to do with him and don't care about him whatsoever. He can be on the waiver wire. I will not touch him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <It was bold. laughs> all right absolutely yeah. disgusting fantasy football i don't know i feel like, like the... Bijan somehow really helps kyle pitts and i think Rit- ritter will just look towards kyle pitts because i feel like ritter kind of just look up looks up to him since he's younger um i feel like he's just going to kind of target kyle pitts and say f it and throw it up to him a lot i feel like he'll be better than last year but i i get i, I mean, shouldn't be too hard to beat um uh, yeah, i think josh goes out there that's and true. more productive than kyle pitts but yeah, I, Kyle Pitts absolutely makes me throw up in my mouth thinking about him. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. That's fair. All right. Where's your head right here, Dan, for uh for your for your second pick? My head's in a few different places, man, but I think I'm actually gonna go with your guy, Quentin Johnston. It might be a little early, but I I just am gonna go for the upside in case of a Keenan Allen or Mike Williams injury. I'm I, I like the receiving core of Diggs, Judy, and Quentin Johnston. Wait, wait, can I stop you? Not in case of a Mike Williams. Yeah, exactly. Injury, when there's a Mike Williams. <laughs> when Mike Williams, I want it to be nice. But when don't they put get... that on me. Don't put that on me. My heart can't take it. My heart can't take it. <laughs> when those Chargers receivers get hurt, you got Quentin Johnson, who has yep. limitless upside with Herbert thrown to him. And I mean, I, I like Quentin Johnson in that offense, even as a complimentary piece to those two receivers. I think he could be good. I'm not starting him week one, but I think he could be someone that really could emerge as a league winner down the road if a few things go his way. 100% no. I, I love that pick. I'm kind of sad because I was hoping to get him later. But, you know, <laughs> you know, you never know. You never know how people think. So, so it's always nice to get a little sneak peek on your guys' um, draft boards. I'll, I'll definitely be taking pictures and notes of this. <laughs> All right. So me, I'm right here. Um, I got three running backs. I got a quarterback. I got my wide receiver one. I'm looking at tight end. I'm also looking at running back or sorry, wide receiver here. And there's some tempting options at wide receiver, but I feel like the tight ends, they're, they they fall off and they fall off fast. And right here, I feel like I need to just go out there and get my guy. Um, and that guy is going to be Pat Firemuth. Absolutely love him. He's just, I think he's the level of consistency for a tight end position. He's not, he's not Travis Kelsey. He's not going rounds two or three, um, but he's consistent. He can be a guy that can catch five, six passes a game and, you know, a touchdown every other week or so. So I absolutely love that. Um, I would have loved to have a top five tight end, but at this pick, this is what this is what I'm happy with right here. Yeah, I like Pat Frymuth this year. Um, he was a rookie last year, yeah. Uh, no, for his second or third year. And I think Dan's Dan accidentally muted himself. Yep, I think he did. I accidentally muted myself there, but yeah, <laughs> I, I love Pat and fantasy this year. Um, Darnell Washington coming in doesn't really scare me too much. He's a clunky receiver, especially as a rookie and more of a blocker right now. But yeah, I, I love Pat and I think he's going to be really productive as a rookie or not as a rookie this year um, in fantasy. Yeah. And I think he's one of the more reliable tight ends I would take around here because like we saw last year, there aren't many good tight ends. 100%. Kenny Pickett, I think Kenny Pickett's in for, I mean, I said it earlier with the big second year breakouts. I think Kenny Pickett's one of those guys, him, George, him and George Pickens. Kenny Pickett looked really good down the stretch last year. He's, one of the biggest reasons why they finished above 500. Um, so Kenny Pickett and Pat Frymuth could be a solid uh, duo right there. And they already had a good connection last year. They uh, Pickett looked towards Pat a lot. So, yeah, I like Pat this year as a tight end. 
okay so now i'm up and i i still i still need a wide receiver there is one this one that i'm thinking about would go along with i mean he'd be a pretty big i feel like he'd be a boomer bust type of guy um but there's no one else don't take my dude jen i'm gonna i'm gonna take him i think with jordan love uh, he kind of he could hyper target him. Uh, Christian Watson obviously was boomer bust last year. Danny, you felt that you had him. Um, Christian Watson is scary, but he could be big, especially you know some weeks here and there. No, in that yeah. spot, that's great value for what he proved to sh- sh- show that he can bring last year. And with him going into his second year with Jordan Love and him already having a little bit of a connection, I. I love him this year. And like you said, you're shooting for upside of the receiver position. So I love pairing him with Olave and uh, I would take him over Drake London in that spot as well. I like, I like Christian Watson a lot this year. Dang it. That's, that was my next pick. <laughs> I absolutely love him. He's such a deep threat. And he, um, when, uh, when Jordan love, I think I can't remember who they were playing, but when he went in he immediately targeted Christian Watson, he had like a 64 yard touchdown. I remember it was like towards the end of the season. Um, and yeah. They seem they seem to already have a connection, so I absolutely love that pick. And he was a stud. Yeah, he was a stud last year. I mean, Dan had him on his team, and he definitely he definitely won him some games there at the end of the back half of the season. So he saved my season, man. Yeah, he has that uh, electric game game changing for fantasy, like game winning, taking over mentality, where, where he can actually win you games. Like he has that upside. So he he, and he's he scored only- me like forty point games last year at the end of the season. And he was only a rookie last year. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. He dropped a lot of touchdowns too. He would have had way better stats, but he dropped a lot. So I think I think that's something he could definitely improve this year. Yeah. A um, lot of upside. I like that pick. My next pick, I'm looking at the running backs are kind of kind of gross. I don't know. I mean, Brian Robinson, you have Brian Robinson. Jamal Williams. We don't know what's going to happen with Alvin Kamara, but Jamal Williams is very interesting this yes. year. Um, People forget he was the leading touchdown rusher. Yeah, he eighteen touchdowns last year. So I think no matter I, what, he'll be a goal line, a goal line guy for sure. With upside, I do still need a tight end, and I know who I'm going to take, and I don't need to take him here yet. So I think I think I'm just I'm going to go Hollywood Brown with or without. D Hop, I think Hollywood's gonna be solid, even with or without Kyler. If it's, if it's Colt McCoy, Kyler, D Hop's there, D Hop's not there, doesn't matter. I think if um, Hollywood can stay healthy, he's gonna be, he's gonna have a solid season. He could be a top top twenty four guy, top twenty guy, as my third wide receiver. Hundred percent. Him and Kyler have that connection dating back to Oklahoma. So I love that they yeah. traded for him last year. Obviously, it was kind of an injury ridden season. Um, but I think they're going to get back at it this year. And I, I love that pick, especially especially this late. You're just shooting with guys with upside. So, you know, exactly. no problem with that pick. And so I'm going to kind of copy your trend and do something very similar. I got to go wide receiver too. I only have Garrett Wilson. But, you know, I love that. I love Garrett Wilson. He's going to have to carry my wide receivers. But this guy's got tremendous upside, and it's uh, Mr. Calvin Ridley. Um, you know, he got suspended all last year for gambling, uh, got traded to the Jaguars. And I think I think this is a dude that could have a special connection with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he's talking he's talking a big game. He's saying he's going to be a fourteen hundred yard wide receiver. He's going to be one of the best wide receivers in the league. You know, you know, you got to talk the talk. Let's let's see you walk the walk. And uh, I, I'm excited. I'll, I'll I'll take him with upside right here. I like Calvin Ridley this year. He's I do, I think he does a very very I think it's majority a bigger chance that he outperforms his ADP than bust basically. It's just scary with like we were talking about who oh the Broncos wide receiver room. It's kind of the same here. You got Calvin Ridley, you got Marvin Jones is gone, obviously, but Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Travis Etienne gobbles up some targets. So th- there's a lot of mouths to feed here too. But there's I can see Calvin Ridley having north of eleven hundred yards. I think fourteen hundred yards is kind of steep. I don't know. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, if he had a thousand yards, I'd be happy. Um He's talking a big game. I think I think he can. They did get rid of Marvin Jones. Um, they did add some pieces, but I think I'd feel happy if he was like an eight to thousand yard guy with seven or eight touchdowns. Yeah, in that offense with a lot of mouths to feed, like you were saying. 
Yeah, they have a lot of receivers. That is the thing for his production, but he's going to be good. Like the last time we saw him in fantasy, he was absolutely just league winning. So just a good high upside pick. Like you said, you need the upside with the two receivers. So I like that pick a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm I'm struggling deciding my next pick here. I, I don't think Dalton Schultz should be on the board, so I'm going to take Dalton Schultz, and he's going to be my starting tight end. Um, I could uh, see him being available. I could yeah. see people yeah. being scared away from him because he's on a bad, young Texans offense. Yeah, it makes sense I love for sure. potential, though, with C.J. Stroud. I think that will yeah. be fun. I think that's going to be fun. If Dak Prescott can feed him in a in – a, I mean – I think he's going to be C.J. Stroud's safety blanket from day one. So that is a very high upside pick. I, that's kind of something I didn't even think about until he just picked. So, yeah, I, I would actually probably feel comfortable taking him a round or two earlier. Yeah, I was just kind of thinking about it. And the way that C.J. Stroud plays, he threw it to his tight end a lot last year, Stover. Um, he's going to be coming out next year. I I just – I like I like Dalton Schultz. He's a reliable player. He's such a good security blanket. And like you said, they don't have a lot of good receivers for the Texans, so I think he's going to be throwing to Dalton Schultz a lot early on, and they could build a nice connection as a rookie. So I like that. In Dynasty Leagues, I would even target Dalton Schultz just in case he's a future tight end. It is a one-year deal, I guess, so I might be getting ahead of myself. But he, he, he could earn himself a new you know deal with the Texans. I like that. 100%. I like the pick. Where, where do we think uh, Leonard Fournette ends up? I saw oh, he's the man. best before you. That's that's going to be interesting. <laughs> I mean, who who cares? I guess yeah. is the answer to that. At this point, he's going to be like a third string running back. I have no idea where he, that guy's going to end up, man. Maybe unless he goes to like the Bengals and we see Joe Mixon, they get rid of him or Joe Mixon. He Joe Mixon has legal stuff going on right now. But so if someone like Zeke or when Fournette goes to the Bengals, I mean, that could be something to look at, assuming yeah. Joe Mixon is gone. Bengals yeah, are a great spot. Yeah. I would love to see him on the Bengals. I'd actually really like that. That'd be dope. That'd be that'd be a really cool spot for him to end up. I actually really, really like that. Yeah, I love that actually. <laughs> um, Jamal Williams is gonna be my next pick. Just with the uncertainty surrounding Kamara, I think I'm I'm swinging for upside with my draft, and I think Jamal Williams could be a running back that could really help me with Kenneth Walker having some question marks. So I, I like Jamal Williams in New Orleans, and I think that he's going to be kind of their bell cow while Kamara is suspended. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. Now we're kind of getting to the back end of our draft. Um, you know, we got a, some more and more depth pieces and, and backups, but a guy who I want to take for upside right here, and I'll start I'll start kind of speeding this up, but I'm going to take uh, Khalil Herbert. Um He's kind of an interesting pick. I think he's a boomer bust type of guy, but with him sitting on my bench and if, you know, I think he's going to be the guy to start out. They did get Roshan Johnson, but I think Khalil Herbert's earned his role to be the, you know, the bell cow right now. So I love the upside of that pick. I want him on my bench. And especially at this pick, I feel, I feel really comfortable having him there. I still need a tight end. And I mean, the tight end, Dawson Knox, <laughs> it's so bad right now. <laughs> this Evan is Ingram, <laughs> Matt, like this, it is absolutely disgusting um, right now. Okay, let me pause. Evan Ingram, I think, is actually going to be good, but we're like we were talking about Calvin Ridley earlier. It's scary with all, all the receivers in that room. Um, I do think Evan Ingram will still be. I think mean, he'd be top six, top five. Um, he definitely could be. I think I'm going to still pass on tight end, though. Um, I could use – I guess I can go either way. Yeah. I want, Okay, I wanted this guy. I'm going to take the upside. I'm going to take the upside of uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. That tight end, that tight end selection has got you uh, shook a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That, the selection of tight end is a little bit thin there. There is there's a rookie tight end that I'm eyeing right here for a for a bench spot. Dude. <laughs> there's two actually. There's one on the Raiders, one on the Bills, just a hint. That's which that's could have I'm tremendous upside. That's that's what I'm waiting for. All right, the cat's out the back. I'm waiting for a rookie tight end. I won't say who. I know who it is. I know who it is. We all know who it is. <laughs> well, uh, well, let's just say he's not gonna be there when you come back. I don't so I went with Jackson Smith and Jake, but I don't know if that's Round eight. I don't know if that's a bit of a reach. I feel like he could be available later, but oh no, he 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 would be off the board by then. I think he'd be up. Yeah. Honestly, I think he would. 
I feel like just the name, he's going to get overdrafted a little bit. People aren't going to really realize he's their, just their slot receiver. I feel like he's going to get overdrafted a little bit, honestly. Yeah. Oh, I'm up again. But I like the upside of all your, your receiving room. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You go back to back. That's why I was, that's why I was I laughing at you with the tight ends. I didn't realize I was up again. I totally forgot. So, yeah, I want either Michael Meyer or Dalton Kincaid. They have Michael Meyer ranked a lot higher in this, which – yeah. I guess I could I could see that he's the clear tight end one. Yes, it's just Devontae Adams and I mean who else? I guess Hunter Renfro, but he was kind of Jacoby Myers. They brought in from the Patriots. Yeah. Um, personally, but they did lose Waller, so I mean, come on. Yeah, man, that's hard. I I feel like Michael Myers just a little bit. I, I don't know. I, I feel like Mike Meyer is a little bit safer as a fantasy pick. That's fair. I think he is the safer doesn't player. Feel, it doesn't feel right, but I feel like he's a little bit safer because you got you still have Dawson Knox. Who, he probably won't be ahead of Kincaid, but you still have Dawson Knox there, plus Stefan, plus Gabe Davis. Isaiah McKenzie's gone, but yeah, he's gone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I, th- I, th- I, th- so I think. Yeah, you we say. saw we saw Dalton Kincaid go from Josh here a few picks later, but I I do get what you mean. Michael Mayer does have a higher floor. Um, that's he does as a player as well. He just has a higher floor. He's a safer prospect, so I understand that you need him as a starter, and I understand Josh taking Kincaid as the backup to Pat um, with the upside, the very high upside, t- stealing it from me because I would stacked him with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and would have been feeling pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're both fantastic prospects. Um, and Michael Michael Mayer is um he's uh he's getting passes from Jimmy G, who threw ninety percent of his passes it seemed like to George Kittle. So I absolutely love that. He reminds me of a very similar player, Michael Mayer does. Um, and he's safe. He's gonna he's a red zone threat. Um, they're gonna be doubling Devontae Adams. I'm not super high on uh, Hunter Renfro after last year, but yeah, I love that shit pick Shane. I probably would have done Mayer first too. Yeah. And then but I, I love the upside of Kincaid who I went second. Um and I need to I, I was like if I'm going if I'm drafting a tight end late, I like to kind of take one as like one of my first bench spots. So I have a little bit of upside right there. And Kincaid's got all the upside in the world. Um Evan lower Ingram, floor, but higher upside. Evan Ingram towards the back half around nine feels like a bit of a steal. I feel like Ingram could should probably be going earlier than that. Uh, that feels like a bit of a steal. Right. With his production last, year. last year, that's a steal. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. All right, Dan. I'm going to pick, and I'm going to be picking Jahan Dotson. He had a really good rookie year last year. Um, I, I like him. Sam Howell isn't the most exciting, but Sam Howell showed that he liked Dotson when he did play last year, and I feel like they could have a good connection, both being rookies last last year together. Um, I like I like Dotson's outlook and fantasy, and then I'm gonna compliment him with a running back, and I I am gonna take uh oh <laughs> that's rough. I'm actually gonna, I I was gonna take Charbonnet, but I have Kenneth Walker, so I'm gonna wait wait wait, wait 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 that could be it could be really good insurance for you. It I could mean, be because Kenneth Walker's so injury prone. It could be nice. This could be it'd be good insurance granted. So that I mean, this pick for you is not a waste, but you're basically picking for not much production right away. But it's really good insurance. It's good value too for a rookie. I'll take Zach Schreiber now. You can talk to me into it. Yeah, uh, good good insurance for my injury prone Kenneth Walker. I like that a lot. Where did uh, Isaiah Pacheco go? He went earlier. Isaiah Pacheco went. Oops. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do you guys feel about him this year? I mean, he was—he's kind of a stud last year. Oh um, yeah, I definitely am higher on him. I feel like oh, he he's might... the first team, all uh, round seven, first pick, round seven. Okay, and that's kind of where oh. I feel comfortable taking him. I mean, I'd probably like to, I'd probably rather get him eight or nine, just because the Chiefs' offenses hasn't been friendly to running back since. Well, Korean. I think they're gonna rely on him. They—they they didn't bring anyone else yeah. in. They all, they re-signed Jerry McKinnon. And, I mean, who else is there? I guess Clyde is still there, but it seems like they've basically given up on Clyde. No, I actually love Pacheco in fantasy this year. I think he's really going to be their bell cow. I think they're the whole season they're just going to rely on Pacheco to kind of give him energy and boost. So I, I really like Pacheco this year in fantasy. I'd be comfortable taking him from in the six even. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's, that's kind of early for me, but I love him. I love him too. Um, 
My head is I'm kind of going back and forth on receiver running back. I feel like the value maybe at receiver is a little bit better. I really wanted Adam Thielen. He went one pick before me, of course. Um, but I'm going to go wide receiver two in the Minnesota Vikings, who will probably be gone at this point in our league, I don't know, because um, we got a big Vikings fan. But Jordan Addison, with the upside and everything, is fantastic. I mean, he, he'll probably – I probably feel comfortable taking him, like, round seven because he's going to step in and be an immediate wide receiver two in that offense. And I think he complements Justin Jefferson really, really well. He's kind of almost like a very similar player. So I, I, I like that pick for myself. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think yeah, I, I bet he'll probably be, be more productive than Adam Thielen too. Uh, that's it's hard with rookies, but there's a good chance more productive. Yeah, I think than they'll Adam be Thielen. Thielen. Um, so I'm up here. Sorry, I'm just thinking. I'm just looking at these running backs, and these options are so disgusting. It's not even funny. Rashad Penny would have been a great option this year, but now with DeAndre Swift, he's scary. Yeah. Um, don't care about Damian Harris. Oh, man. I don't necessarily need a running back right now. One um, of the rookies, Tajay Spears or Tanks Bixby, is um, is pretty interesting, too. Or A-Chain with the Dolphins. Oh, Daniel yeah. Love is, loves uh, his best running backs. Man. John you know what? Okay. Johnson. This – I feel all right. I feel like my team is a big upside team, and this pick could be a bit of a reach, but I want to stack him with my quarterback – and so I'm gonna go with eight flowers. I like it. I like it. That Good is, uh, that's a you, pick, pick. you you gotta go for upside with these picks. And I feel like Zay Flowers. I mean, you've got Odell, Mark Andrews. Can you really count Rashad Bateman? He's hurt and he's doesn't even like the Ravens management, so or owners um owners and whatnot. So I don't know. I feel like Zay Flowers could be a sneaky good pick this year. Yeah, perfect area for him to go to in the draft. I'm up again. I need. I guess I need another running back. So, Deonta Foreman's interesting. Uh, he's, he was productive last year uh, when they traded McCaffrey. He's on the Bears now with Roshan and Khalil Herbert. So yeah, he's, it's Khalil a weird, Herbert is weird. I mean, but he could be. He could be their number two running back. It's interesting. Who knows? He, I think Deontay Foreman's their number one running back right now. I think oh, he's really? going to start the season as a starter. He is right now. Yeah. Even if he's not. Having him having a picking a running back in the eleventh round, who's going to be splitting carries, who we saw was pretty productive. I mean, he was super streaky. I guess only when he played the Atlanta Falcons, he was really productive. But I guess I'll probably go down to Foreman here. He's a good bench running back to have. Yeah, I like that. Good upside too. With they have an injury or two in that running back room, and he's all they have. So yeah, it's like a defense. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Eagles defense. <laughs> I took a defense um, that just continued to stack um, their their defense in the draft, and they broke the sack record last year. And I have a good feeling they're gonna re-break it this year with what they added. So, you it's know, really defenses easy. are sneaky good picks. They can they can score you a lot of points. I I you know I got lucky with the Patriots last year winning me a lot of games because they yeah. somehow would always get a pick six at the end of the game. It was fantastic. Um, but Eagles, Eagles are going to have 100 sacks this year. Just watch. I would take Anthony Richardson here, but I'm going to be fair. I think he'd be gone because of his upside. He's going to go early. I, I'm going to take Bryce Young, though, just to get a good, solid, um, c- consistent backup in there for Josh Allen. I like Bryce Young in the later rounds just to have a good – I feel like he's going to be a guy that's at the top of the waiver wires every week this, this year. Um, just a good, consistent quarterback that I'm willing to take here as my backup. I like it. I like Bryce Young. That's a that's a good uh good QB two. And then my second pick is gonna be Greg Dulcich. I like him, his outlook as well with Judy and this uh Sean Payton offense. Uh they didn't bring in too many tight ends, just Adam Troutman and uh blocking tight end and man hurts. So I like Dulcich. I think Sean Payton could use him in some creative ways and I like Dulcich. I was for my uh for my bench, I just like to go high upside. It's once you get down to this point of the draft, you're like, oh, it's just so gross. Um, there's a lot of guys with uh, with with some good upside here. Um, trying to figure out what I what I like the most, but I'm gonna go with a guy that I think could is gonna step into the Juju Smith Schuster role immediately and have some potential upside for wide receiver. I'm gonna go with She Rice. I like that. And I'm gonna 
yeah, I think I think he could. He's kind of a bigger guy. I think um, I think I think he could thrive. Obviously, I don't think it's hard. Any any wide receiver could be good. It's just who Pat Mahomes is going to target the most, and I think he's got a good chance to be fifty catch guy at, at best. But you know, on my bench, I'm not too mad about that. So so I'm up again. I don't personally. I don't usually like to draft two tight ends, but with having a rookie tight end, it's a little bit scary. And there's a tight end that I I got. Put on to him last year. I think he was a rookie last year. Um, and now I'm going to take him here. That's Chig, Chig Aconquo. His full name is Chigazim, but I hear people call him Chig. And he, if you look at the depth chart, and I kind of hate that I'm putting it out there that I like this guy because I don't think he's very known. And if you look at the Titans depth chart, it's Trayvon Burks and Chig Aconquo. It's There's no one else. There's no other tight ends, absolutely nobody's. And I think Kyle Phillips is there and um, – Nikhil Westbrook, or whatever his name is. So Aconquo is a very good sleeper. Yeah, um, I mean, at this in this area of the draft, too, it's an absolute steal. And last year, he was so fun. They would hand the ball off to him, just get yeah. him the ball in any way. Like a wide receiver. Yeah, he's such an athletic okay. player. He's so he's like a fullback slash receiver slash running back slash tight end. So he's just a good blocker. He's really good overall. He's a fun player. I love that. So with my – I'm going to go – Back up. I want so I wanted Geno Smith as my quarterback. I wanted to take a late quarterback. That was kind of my plan oh. coming into it. But um, I already got Lamar, so I feel like Geno. I that's a steal um, yeah. to get Geno as my backup. Yeah, like how that. good he was last year. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he was like quarterback like seven. It was weird. <laughs> Who would have thought Geno Smith would have finished as quarterback seven? And all they did was get freaking some complimentary pieces jackson smith and jigba another good running back that can catch um so they did they did a good job um with uh complimenting gino and right here easy pick for me he's somehow still on the board give me the upside of a running back devon a chain um he's in a big running back by committee that's why he's not being drafted earlier but he's got upside i think he could um you know by by midseason be be their rb1 and he's a fun guy. I mean, he's lightning in a bottle. He's fast. Anytime he touches the ball, he can, he can score. So I love the upside right there. Yeah. And then I'm going to take Odell just for the upside. It's Odell. And you never know. He could have some weeks where he gets a few touchdowns, you know, and with Lamar Jackson, that could be a decent duo. And at this part of the draft, I'm just going for upside. That's really all I care about. Two picks left. They're making me pick a defense, I guess. Um, I will take the Baltimore Ravens defense and we'll move on. <laughs> they're always solid they're always solid yeah all right i'm back up um i got one more bench player and a kicker i gotta go Ooh, who do i want to go there's some upside I'm, I'm, i mean tajay spears is still available Sam jp ryan um tanks bigsby kendra miller could be interesting with the saints um he's very interesting i'm very intrigued by him um josh kelly isaiah spiller is still on the board who knows what will happen with austin eckler um, I'm sure he'll end up playing Deuce Vaughn as a backup piece to Tony Pollard. Kind of intrigues me. But I'm going to go upside here. I'll go Tajay Spears. He'll be a top 10 running back if Derrick Henry gets hurt. I mean, he can run, he can catch. He's a fun player. He he did everything right at the combine. He got drafted in a in a great system with Mike Rabel. So that's that's my last upside pick right there, and I'm happy with it. So I need I need to, I, I tried to do this uh, with my last two picks a defense and kicker. This is actually an easy uh, defense pick right here. The Jets uh, kind of surprised they're still available. Oh yeah, they they were they were freaking good last year. <laughs> Who would have known? Hey, their defense carried them a lot. That was a that was a fun defense. Who would have known? And Jason Myers, a lot of dogs. Yeah, he, Jason Myers had some not much to say about kickers, but Jason Myers had some crazy boom games last year. Final pick. Give me Dicker the kicker. <laughs> no, you stole him from me. No. no. <laughs> Not Dicker the kicker, man. Uh, the kicker. Yes, sir. <laughs> my draft plans have been ruined again. Thank you. But with that, I, I'll close the draft out with Jake Moody, I guess. Fine. That was a fun draft. That was a fun draft. Yeah. We'll be – um. We'll be screenshotting these and posting them on Instagram. Um, seeing who 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 people like um the best. Um, but that was that was a fun that was a fun mock, guys. That was a that was a good start to the season. I'm glad I got a little bit of intel on who you guys like. Yeah, yeah thank you guys. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into that one. It was a little long, but it was fun getting a new guest in there, Shane. So thank you, uh, Shane, for joining us for some fantasy uh, podcasts. We'll get you in here for some future ones as well. I'm excited for a lot of fantasy content coming up. And yeah, this mock draft was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yes, sir. That was a blast. Thanks, guys. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you guys get your podcasts. We're everywhere. And yeah, um, it was fun having Shane on today. Shane, how'd you feel about it? I thought it went well. It was fun. Uh, and it feels good to finally be in the fantasy swing of things. I was kind of getting sick of the NFL draft side of stuff. <laughs> it's a good time of the year, baby. We're, we're going to be going full force in this. And yeah, thanks, guys. This was a fun one. All right. Peace. Yep.